Delaware Friday for June 29th, 2018. This is episode 71, and today we're going to be talking about the Microsoft Flow Management Connector. So before we get into that, a few announcements I want to make. So first off, summer hours are now in effect. As you may have noticed last week, well hopefully you noticed, uh, last week there wasn't an episode of Middle War Friday. And the reason, similar to last year, is we're going to slow things down a little bit in the summer. So from now until September, where we'll be publishing an episode every two weeks. So Steph Jan and I will alternate every two weeks. Uh, which means two weeks from tomorrow or today, uh, if you're watching this on Friday, Steph Jan will publish an episode and then the following two weeks it'll be my turn and so forth. Uh, just to give people an opportunity to take a break, including ourselves, um, as you can see this is episode 71, so we've been moving pretty quick. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to keep people in the loop from that perspective. Another thing to be aware of is the Business Application Summit is occurring July 22nd to 24th. 22nd is a pre-date. And this is really the business application platform's big event. So if you're looking for a lot of Flow, Power Apps, CDS, Power BI, or dynamic specific information, this is the place to be. In fact, there are over 35 Flow sessions, which is pretty much unheard of, um, relative to other conferences that we participate in. So the whole PM team will be there. Engineers will be there, MVPs will be there, partners will be there. This is definitely the place that you want to be for Microsoft Flow content. In addition, uh, John Levesque and myself will also be hosting a Flow in a Day session. Uh, this would be a pre-day session. Uh, we're going to take you through more than six hours of Flow content. We're naturally going to have a lot of fun. We're also going to have a bit of a hackathon at the end. And we'll be there to help you and mentor you and and actually work through some of the use cases side by side with you. So if you haven't signed up, definitely go ahead and check that out. Now for today's content, we want to talk about the Flow Management Connector. And in part due to a couple factors. So number one, at Build, we did announce that we were investing further in Management Connector experiences for Microsoft Flow and for Power Apps. So we've started on some of that work. And I certainly want to take the opportunity to get people's feedback if they do have feedback around features that they need for either Power Apps or Flow. So go ahead and email me at the following address. And then the next thing I wanted to show you was a couple flows that you could actually build right now um, that use the Flow Management Connector and provide some instant value. Uh, so this was uh, in part due to a conversation I was having with um, Antonio, who's uh, an MVP and a partner of ours, and he was uh, talking about some of these scenarios. So we figured we'd go ahead and I'd build them out, and who knows, maybe these will turn into templates as well. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, we're in the Flow Maker portal, and I'm just going to go ahead and create from blank for now. Like many of my flows when I'm testing, I just use a button flow. And we're going to go ahead and add a new step. Then we can just type in flow. And when we do so, we'll see all of these different actions or operations that are provided. So create connection, create flow, delete flow, get connector, get flow, etc. Now do know that these, when they don't contain the word as admin, those mean that they function under the user context. When you have an administrator, you have these additional operations that will use your admin context to go ahead and perform specific operations. So generally, you can mix and match these things. I think um, in my mind, there's a lot of value in the as admin, but I also feel like there's a few different actions and, and operations missing from that persona as well. So this is something that we're, we will work on, but just be aware of those different contexts because as an admin, you're not gonna be able to start someone else's flow using this specific operation, but that might be an example of one that you should be able to do if you are an admin, have the ability to stop or start a flow. So this is where you find the flow management connector, but let's now get into a couple different scenarios. Now the first one I want to use is count my flows. Now we have um, some people within the organization, especially our template 
team where they create a lot of flows and you might want to know how many flows do I have in my subscription am I about to run out things of that nature so we can go ahead and build a flow that's going to do this using the flow management connector so in this case we will use recurrence and we can set this to be whatever we want in this case I'm setting it once a week now we're going to use some variables in these flows really to track or store some of these values while we are running so in this case we'll just set a flow count to zero and then what we want to do is list my environments now this is going to run under the user context but in this case that's what we're interested in and it's going to go ahead and return all environments now something you may have noticed in some of the when using the flow management connector is that it always wants you to select an environment but that doesn't mean that you can't actually choose a dynamic value, right? Like these are all of the environments that I have access to, but you know what? I want to dynamically set this. So I'm going to go ahead and use enter custom value. Then I can go ahead and take a look at my dynamic content. And then what we'll do is we'll find my list, my environments um, action, which is above. And then we'll just go ahead and find environment name. Now this is a little bit misleading. It's different than the display name. This is actually a GUID that is a reference to that specific environment. So we'll use that and now what we'll do is we'll iterate over top of that that list that'll get returned from list my environments and all we want to do now is count the the flow. So you don't need to then make another call where you want to um, you know list all of my flows like and, and loop through and count them one by one. We don't need to do that. What we can do is we can use an expression and we're going to use the length expression and then provide the output from list my flows which is going to be an array of values. This will give us the total number of flows within a specific environment and what we'll do is we'll continue to add to that as we go through this outer final step we'll make is we'll just go ahead and send out an email that indicates the number of flows within our subscription because remember we're going through all of the environments that we do have. So we can go ahead and save these changes and I'm not sure if I've talked about it before but um, if I haven't there's a nice new handy button here called test and there's two options as of right now that allow me to perform the trigger action myself so in this case it could be you know pressing a button if you had an email trigger then you would have to wait and go ahead and send an email and wait for that email to come through or and this is a really cool feature we can use a previous run so we'll use the inputs from a previous run to run this one so I'm just gonna go ahead and perform the trigger action manually so now I'll get prompted I'll just go ahead and click this button click done see that the flow is running it only takes a few seconds in part because we're not doing that second loop we're just going through eight iterations and updating our count variable and then we'll go ahead and send this email out If we head over here we can go ahead and open this and see that we've got 95 flows within our subscription and that uh, we've been busy so keep it up so that's pretty cool so certainly um, Maybe, maybe not be super interesting for everyone, but I know for some folks that have a lot of flows, it could be. The next scenario I want to go through is from an admin perspective, if you're interested in knowing the number of flows that exist within your environment or your tenant. And I think this is actually probably more useful, and this is something every tenant admin should set up, at least for now, until our admin analytics get shipped soon. And what this one is going to do is it's going to go through each environment and it's going to list flows as admin. Now, as I mentioned before, this is going to list my environments in the user context, but the idea being an admin has access to all environments. So therefore you will see all environments. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and list flows as admin. We don't want to just list my flows. We want to list all flows and we're going to use a similar a mechanism as I showed you on the previous example but this case uh, we need to do a little bit more work because we want to provide a little bit more granular of a report so what we're going to do is we're going to have an environment count integer which is going to be zero this is going to store the number of flows for a specific environment we also want to have a variable that will store the number of flows for an entire tenant and then we want to build out an array which is going to capture each environment and its value as we go through each environment. So similar to the previous example, list all of the environments, list all of my flows as an admin. 
In this case, I want to add or update rather my environment count, and we'll use an expression similar as the one before, where length, and we want to get the array or the list of values from the previous command. Then what we want to do is we want to, as we go through each environment, append essentially a message or a node that we'll include as part of our output, which will be the name of the environment. So this is going to be the environment display name this time, not environment name. So environment display name plus the value for environment count. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add that node. And then what we want to do is we want to increment the tenant count as well. And in this case, we're going to just basically add on the environment count for this iteration of the loop. Now, in order to perform some formatting or to include some formatting, we're going to use HTML table. We can use the advanced options and include headers and have our columns automatically added. Then we'll go ahead and send out an email indicating the number of flows within the tenant and then our digest or our report. So let's go ahead and we'll just save this and we'll go ahead and test. So this is going to be set up on a recurse, recurrence trigger. This could also be a button, um, but I think this would probably be something useful if someone, an admin, set this up to run every week and you just want it to have like just a cursory understanding of the amount of flows and you can start to see whether there's spikes and when there's spikes maybe you want to go ahead and investigate to see what people were actually doing but this will allow you some visibility where you can passively receive the feedback as opposed to you having to remember to go check it all the time. So we can go ahead and see that this flow has run. We've got 101 flows in total. We've got all of the different environments and we can see the breakdown by environment. Uh, so pretty cool, pretty useful. Uh, I, I know I've got this question many, many times where people want to understand, well, um, you know, how many flows do I have? We do expose similar capabilities inside of PowerShell. So you can go ahead and use PowerShell if you want. But I think this is like extremely simple and really nice to have inside of your flow. So this certainly doesn't replace the need for analytics. That is something, as I mentioned before, we're working on. But in the interim, I think this is a great report. So um, go ahead and use this. So thanks for tuning in to Middleware Friday. Uh, thank you, BizTalk360, for being a great partner of the show. And we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday.